we're good. Everybody, please enjoy Jane Miller's video. Hi, Jane. I just want to say congratulations on this phenomenal honor. It was so well deserved for all the years that you put into lacrosse and administration, representing yourself, your family, Virginia, um, and all of us so well. I want to also thank you for the opportunities that you've provided for me, for my career. Um, you taught me how to coach, you taught me how to have fun, you taught me how to take care of my student athletes. I also want to thank you for putting me in touch with all my teammates from back in the day that I still get the honor of being here with today. So thanks for everything. Congratulations. You're awesome. One of the best ever. And now you're in yet another Hall of Fame. Go Louis. Jane, congratulations. <laughs> IWLCA Hall of Fame. Can't think of a more deserving person, a leader in women's athletics, a pioneer for women's lacrosse. Just so grateful that I had the opportunity to play for you at the University of Virginia. I started my career in coaching because of the experience I had at the University of Virginia playing for you. So thank you so much for everything you've done for me, for all of my teammates, and in the world of lacrosse. Jane Miller brought great student athletes to the University of Virginia, and during her time there, she helped make them even better people. Jane's coaching legacy is uh, something that is impressive with her record and reaching the pinnacle of college coaching, winning the national championship twice, but that is not really where Jane Miller's impact is. Her uh, care for people and all those she's worked with and the mentoring and leadership that she's provided so many people over the years is where Jane really leaves a lifetime legacy. Uh, Jane has led the way for so many of us and um, Putting her among the coaching greats is exactly where she belongs. Jane, you, you created this, and that is what hundreds of us are so proud to be a part of and share this great honor with you. I speak on behalf of so many people who admire you, and congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Congratulations to Jane Miller on being inducted into the 2019 class of the IWLCA Hall of Fame. Jane, you've done a tremendous job for college athletics, but especially for the sport of lacrosse, winning two national championships as a head coach and winning national championships in men's and women's lacrosse as an administrator for the sport. Um, we can't thank you enough for what you've meant to the University of Virginia, what you've meant to me personally as a mentor and role model. So this is a well-deserved uh, award for you. So congratulations. Congratulations, Jake, on your selection to the IWLCA Hall of Fame. You've made so many positive contributions to women's lacrosse, both as a coach and administrator, and you are so worthy of this recognition. When people ask who Jane Miller was as a coach, it's an easy, easy answer. Uh, she really epitomizes just a class act coach. Uh, I think Jane coached with great integrity, great passion, she was smart, enthusiastic, um, as competitive as any coach can get, but yet it was never about her. It was always about the team, about the success of the team, about excellence. And I think one of the things I most admire about Jane as a coach is she had this ability to teach us and lead us as a coach, but encourage us to learn from each other and learn from the game. And that's definitely something I've taken with me my entire playing career and coaching career. I never knew I would have an opportunity to win a national championship when I went to college. And so with that, aside from that being an amazing accomplishment, Jane was someone who taught me about dreaming and dreaming big and knowing that you can accomplish even more. This is truly a wonderful honor. There's no one more deserving of this honor than Jane. Uh, it's really a thrill for, for me and I can speak on behalf of all of my former teammates to see her recognized for the great work she did, not just for us, but for the game of lacrosse. When I think about the impact that she's made on UVA athletics, the community, women's sports in general, it's incredible, it's invaluable, but it's a testament to the person that she is. Hi Jane, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to congratulate you on your induction into the IWLCA Hall of Fame. I fondly recall all the countless hours you spent working to make me a better player, both on and off the field. During my four years, I definitely learned the values of hard work attention to detail, sportsmanship, and a multitude of other lessons that remain with me to this day. As it was, and always will be, an honor and a privilege to have played for you and to have helped you win the first ever national championship. Congratulations, Jane. This is a wonderful day for all of us. It's well-deserved. Enjoy.
Looking forward to celebrating tonight with you, reliving some of our glory days, and I'm sure lots of laughs. So congratulations, Jane. Congratulations, Jane. Congratulations, Jane. Congratulations, Jane. Wah, wah, wah. Let me echo, congratulations, Jane. I would have loved to have played for you. Wow. Thank you to all the people who participated in that video. Um, you all make me smile every, every single day when I think about you. I also want to thank um, the Hall of Fame Committee and the IWLCA for choosing me to join both Robin and Diane in the 2019 class. And also to with all of the other outstanding and awesome coaches who are already enshrined. Uh, congratulations to all the award winners today to the speakers, you were just awesome. It's gonna be a very hard act to follow, um, but I'm gonna try. So first, I wanna say a few more words about Diane Jeppy. I was blessed to have served on the NCA committee with Diane, and I also you know, was blessed to coach against her and her Loyola Greyhounds. Every game for Loyola, I knew it was gonna be a battle, but Nothing like the battle that Diane waged against cancer. Diane was a competitor, as Ricky said. She was a fighter. She was feisty. And at the same time, she understood what was most important about coaching. And Amy talked about her book that her players wrote, their testimonials to Diane, lucky every single day. This is an absolute must read, especially for young coaches. I was reading it again the other day, and it really, it teaches me lessons even though I'm a retired person. So order it and get it. And uh, Shannon and your sisters, um, I know you knew how special your mother was, but now I think you're hearing how special she is to all of us and how much we loved her. So I'm so glad that you're here tonight. One of my favorite um, quotes is, when teamwork is the destination, victory happens along the way. And for me, my most important victories were people and the relationships that I made because of lacrosse. I, of course, remember the games. I remember the championships. I remember a lot of the stories that get better as the years pass. And I learned more stories like I did last night, a few more that I hadn't heard about. But what makes me smile and gives me joy, really, are the people that are now in my life because of lacrosse. Mentors like Josie Harper from Dartmouth, who asked a young, unproven coach to join her World Cup squad in 1986. Assistant coaches like Julie Dayton, who was on the video, who showed my family shirt, and Julie Myers, who stood beside me every day through thick and thin. Coaching colleagues like Chris Saylor, Sandy Timshaw, Sue Tyler, and Diane Jeppe, who challenged me to be the best coach that I could be. And a special thank you to Cindy for pulling her name out of the search process for the Virginia job when I got the Virginia job. <laughs> I think it worked out pretty good for both of us. And I was actually just congratulating Cindy sincerely for what she's accomplished over the years. I think she and Chris Saylor are people who I really admire and appreciate that you still are in the game because your value is invaluable to this group of coaches. And And finally, all of the players that I coached, four of them have chosen coaching as their profession. They're sitting at my table and I'd like them to stand. Julie Myers from Virginia, Bonnie Rosen from Temple, 
Elaine Jones from Longwood, and Jenny Slingloff from UNC. They are all All-Americans, all national champions, and Jenny is your national coach. You know, you had, I had pretty good players. It helped. Actually, I'm pretty fortunate to be standing here tonight, because many years ago, I had a guidance counselor who told me I wasn't college material. But fortunately, I had a mother who thought that that was unacceptable. And she went up to that uh, school and got me a new guidance counselor. <laughs> this was a mild-mannered woman who never said a bad thing about anybody ever. But her children, she stood up for her children. And that really sent me on the ride of my life. I'm sure each of you have someone in your life like that. Or maybe some of you are people who were told they couldn't do things, but you actually have accomplishment. I was introduced to lacrosse in my physical education class in high school, and I was after, right immediately, um, I was uh, hooked on the sport. But I wasn't able to play competitively until I went to college. And even when I went to college, we had to play a number of high school teams because there wasn't enough competition. Um, in New England, there weren't as many college, um, colleges that, that had the um, sport. I didn't even know there was a US lacrosse team. Um, but one of my college teammates mom, made the U.S. squad. I set that as my next goal. When I was a young person, I always dreamed about the Olympics because that was really one of the only things that you could aspire to do. I thought I might be a runner, but that didn't happen. So lacrosse really became my Olympics, and I am so grateful. After my playing career ended, I knew I wanted to coach at the college level. It's been a long time since um, I've coached, but I do have a lot of memories. I do remember the mistakes that I've made, because all of us as coaches make some mistakes. But like everything, we just need to learn from them. I remember exact plays that happened, like the bounce pass that Jenny Levy sent to Julie Myers in the semifinals of an NCAA game. Julie cut up to the arc. Jenny sent her a nice bounce pass. Julie jumped up in the air, turned around, and just knocked that goal to the back of the net. I'll never forget that goal, because it was really pretty awesome. Um, I remember some of the funny stories. Uh, I think I was one of the people who um, wore all black before it was fashionable back in my day. <laughs> and at one um, time before the game, before a game, Sherry Greer, who I hope all of you know, because she's one of the greatest players of all time, came up to me um, at, uh, before the game and said, Jane, are you depressed? <laughs> um, and I just laugh about that, because if you know Sherry, she's a pretty quiet kid, but she had the guts to come up to me and say that to me. I was quite t surprised and tickled. Winning the 1991 championship was a dream come true for me. Um, it was also a turning point for our program at the university. Uh, my coaches, assistant coaches, convinced me that I had to let go of my conservative style of coaching and that I had to allow the players more freedom to play. So we um, adopted a theme that was risks equals mistakes equals success. Intellectually, I knew it was the right decision but I wasn't prepared for what happened. <laughs> the ball was in the bleachers, the ball was in the bushes, and it was really painful to watch. <laughs> but I stuck with it with the encouragement of my assistant coaches, and of course the players loved it, yes. Um, and that was our first national championship. So I learned a lot that season. I learned to be more patient, I learned to be more flexible, and I learned to, more, to trust people, the people around me. I also learned during the 91 season that superstitions are overrated. I'm sure a lot of you in the audience have superstitions. Besides being that conservative coach, I was also very superstitious. So before one of the final fours, I was getting ready for um, the travel. And of course, we all take time to pack. 
We didn't have uh, the kind of gear that you have now, so we actually had to plan on what we were going to wear. And I was um, getting ready, and I had one of those skinny little mirrors, and they were cheap mirrors, that I hadn't attached to the wall, but I just put it up against the wall. And I looked away just for a second, and then when I turned back, I saw this mirror sliding down to the floor, and it crashed into a million pieces. And my first thought was, well, there goes that national championship. <laughs> but fortunately, the mirror didn't decide the winner that particular weekend. Throughout my career, I have hit the jackpot. As I said, I've made mistakes along the way, but at every step, the good Lord really placed great people in my path, people who really inspired me, people who taught me, people who encouraged me, and people who picked me up when I needed to be picked up. These people valued hard work, commitment, and relationships. People who did the right thing for the right reasons, even when it was difficult and unpopular. This game of ours has changed significantly since I coached over the years. Although I admit I was not a proponent of a lot of the, the rules, because I was conservative, I often wish that I could have the opportunity to coach uh, today's game. But aside from the game, I think that the most important challenge for you as coaches is to protect the game and the integrity of the game, to serve as positive role models for young people by word and by deed. I absolutely know that the pressures are different. The stakes are higher, the competition is tougher, and I think Cindy and Chris can talk about that from when we were coaching against each other. But as Tom Hanks said, in a league of their own, the heart is what's good. If it were easy, everyone would do it. I applaud you for putting some sanity back into recruiting with the new rules. A lot of people worked really hard on that, especially Kirsten and Samantha, and you who voted for those rules. A lot of people are watching you. Other sports are watching you. They like the rules, but they want to see how you handle it. So I absolutely encourage you to abide by the recruiting rules, by spirit of the rules, as well as just the rules themselves. Keep the game. The sport of lacrosse is the focal point, even when you are faced with difficult decisions. And I know you are every single day when you recruit and when you, when you deal with young people. I would say right now, look across the table, look behind you, look in front of you, go ahead. And you will find the faces of people who you have coached with or against, beaten or lost to, played for or coached. This is indeed a really small world. Because of that, it is our shared responsibility to continue to be good ambassadors and guardians of the game, especially now as the landscape of college athletics is even more complicated. Before I close, I want to share a couple of more insights from Diane. The first one, the key to fulfillment is knowing what your true passions are and then pursuing them with all of your heart and all of your soul. Number two, a real coach plays not only to win, but to win the respect of her teammates, her opponents, and herself. You could rewrite that as a real coach. Coaches not only to win, but to win the respect of her players, her opponents, and herself. Three, turning a negative situation into a positive one is not only possible, but empowering. And four, Taking the time to make others feel good about themselves enriches both lives. These are this is timeless advice from Diane, and I think we thank her for that. The game of lacrosse gave me not only the profession that I love, but relationships that I treasure. I'm grateful, I'm humbled, and I'm honored to be standing here. Congratulations to all the other winners. Thank you again, and good luck with your upcoming seasons.
Thank you again for sharing that story. As we head into our next inductee, I ask you to really, really again appreciate the specialness of this evening and the stories that we're sharing with one another. Our next inductee uh, we are going to roll the film for is Robin Shepard. Yeah, you almost get re-inspired to coach every time you hear an alum talk about Robin. You're like, oh wow, she just crushed it. Um, and hearing the alums that have most recently come back, but also just alumni that have come back over the past nine years that I've been here, and they speak about Robin as this incredible figure that they would have run to the wall for. My kids know who Robin is. Yeah, they, they know the bad things they need to do this for them. Absolutely. My kids didn't even go here to know who Robin is. I mean, my, my neighbors at home know who Robin is. <laughs> um, but she is far reaching. I coached against Robin Shepard for over 20 years in both field hockey and lacrosse. And even in the Title IX era, when Title IX was in its infancy, Robin's teams were incredibly motivated well-prepared and competitive in an era when women were not encouraged to be very competitive. The women's game was beautiful, you know, it was free-flowing, there weren't a lot of boundaries. Subsequently, we had to work our rear ends off in practice to make sure that our lungs could take chasing the ball when there was no boundaries. Um, but I think, you know, Robin really understood that the game was morphing, she wanted to be ahead of the curve, um, she studied some of the elements of the men's game and incorporated it by the game planning. And so I think it made all the difference for us in, in establishing a really winning program. I would say fortunately for Trinity, Robin is not a typical retiree. And so Robin is present physically. Uh, we can hear her in the hallways when she's around, and that's important. It's important for us to maintain that link to our proud tradition. And Robin does that, whether we're here in Hartford or anywhere we go, everyone knows Robin. So Robin, the, the metamorphosis, as I was talking about earlier, from freshman year to senior year, really came about not only in her coaching style, but in her fashion style. I mean, if there was such things as Pat Riley of the sidelines, Robin was it. I love looking at old photos of Robin, but more importantly, I love when she walks in the building today. She's still dressed in the nice, she looks so good, she's blue and gold, she's cleaned out. I mean, she quite literally bleeds blue and gold. She straddled the parental, coach, friend, mentor in, in such a, a great way that I appreciate more now. We didn't have sororities back then here at Trinity. Um, our sorority was our team, and she was like the head of the sorority. She was like the house mother, if you will. Um, and we just loved to be with her. To this day, you're walking down the hall, you hear that voice, and you know who it is. And it's, instead of E.F. Hutton, you hear that voice and people listen. I think about Trinity, and I think Robin is the face of Trinity College. Robin isn't just a coach. Robin isn't just an administrator. Robin really is Trinity Athletics. Uh, for almost a half a century, she has been the common thread that weaves our department together. So my hope is that during my coaching tenure, I presented a challenge to my lacrosse colleagues every time they had to face a the on the field. And my other hope is that myself and my team treated the officials with the respect and courtesy that they certainly deserve. Uh, but most importantly, I hope that every athlete who ever played on my Trinity Lacrosse teams felt respected and valued. Uh, whether they were starting All-American or the last kid off the bench, uh, they were an integral part of our team. And I hope they, I hope they felt that. Congrats, Robin. We couldn't be more proud. And uh, as always, you bleed blue and gold for us. And we love you so much. Go Bants! Congratulations, Robin. You bring that glass of wine right up with you. <laughs> you deserve it. The podium is yours. Congratulations. Thank you.
we really should get to see those videos before tonight. Um, <clears throat> So hi everyone, um, it's not only an honor to be with you tonight and standing here on this um, platform, but it's surreal to me because I actually stepped away from this coaching sideline in 1999. So to be acknowledged, I want to say I'm speechless, but if you know me, you know I'd be lying. <laughs> um, I remember these conventions. They were always so informative and uh, busy with all the presenters, and they were always social, of course. But correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear when I was coaching, I was in Philly at the Ramada Inn <laughs> drinking Bud Light. <laughs> and yesterday, I pulled in to the Hilton in West Palm and we had dirty martinis. <laughs> I, change is good. I like where this association's going. I want to say how proud I am to be um, included with the other two inductees. Jane, I know I'm older than you, but I have admired you your whole career. Um, I've actually strived to follow your path from coaching to administration. You have my admiration for all your accomplishments, my congratulations on this award tonight, and my best wishes for your recent retirement. Enjoy it. And to Shannon and her sisters, when I was awarded the Diane Geppi Award, I think it was 15 years ago, um, one of the highlights of that evening was Diane's parents, so Shannon and her sister's grandparents, were at my table. And we bonded, and 15 years later, Catherine and John Geppi, we still exchange Christmas cards. And it's not just a card, there's like a long family update. <laughs> and it's in cursive, of course, you know, your grandpa. And I just, um, Although I didn't meet you until tonight, I feel like I know everything about you. <laughs> this honor comes to me at a very pivotal time. Uh, at Trinity, we are celebrating 50 years of co-education, bringing women onto campus. And uh, as you heard in the video, I've been kind of called off the bench to help with a few initiatives. Although I wasn't on the ground floor when we accepted women to Trinity, uh, in 1969, I arrived on campus just a few short years later, and I'm just going to give you a snapshot of that journey. So I was in my senior spring at Trenton State College, <laughs> and I was a health and physical education major, and obviously no computers. I don't even think we had a career center where you went for a job, but what we did have is we had professors one in particular, Professor Brink, who at the end of class, if you hung around long enough, they would read off a list of job opportunities. And I must have been slow getting out of the room one day because what I clearly remember Dr. Brink announcing was there's a two-year graduate fellowship at Trinity College. You get to teach physical education. You get to be the head coach of field hockey, basketball, and lacrosse. You get your master's at night, and you get free housing in the dorm. Now, what bothered me about this job possibility was he said graduate fellowship, and I thought that meant you had to be a guy, fellow, ma male. Um, that is no dig on Trenton State College. Um, I also was tapped out academically, and the thought of going for two more years just wasn't in my wheelhouse. And I also thought, where the hell is Trinity College? I never even heard of it. Um, the fact that one of the sports I was going to be hired to coach was basketball, and I had been cut from my team in ninth grade didn't faze me in the least. <laughs> Not in the least. I came up for the interview. I used my faithful Road Atlas, still got lost in Hartford, as many of you probably do. And I got hired 
to do that job at the age of 22. I showed up, I had my Trenton State Navy blue blazer on, I had my health and physical education patch firmly sewn onto the left pocket, I had my lanyard, my whistle, I was ready to roll. My salary was $94.96 a month. Now why would I remember that all these years later? Roughly speaking, that was 23 more dollars a week than I had in college. So uh, that was, I was over the moon, that was a win-win for me. And yes, my lacrosse team, when I arrived, they were in fact wearing the men's old uniforms that just hadn't been given away yet, you know, with a big 89 number on them tucked in to our very own cutoff jeans. And we moved from that lovely uniform to something that was ordered for us, which was a long-sleeved, 100% wool um, rugby shirt with very tight um, shorts, I guess you'd call them. And Lycra hadn't been invented yet, so I don't... But we were thrilled to be playing the game that we loved, and we had a blast. There were no stats taken, there were very few pictures taken, and our schedule seriously consisted of Yale, because they had just gone co-ed in 1969, they were right down the road, and any like local prep schools. And so the irony about that was, we could hang with Yale, for a couple seasons anyway, and we got crushed by Miss Porter's school season <laughs> after season <laughs> after season. <laughs> And it, it wasn't embarrassing. Like, we were thrilled to be playing the game that we loved, and we had a blast. So it started as a two-year gamble um, when Trinity hired me, turned into a 41-year career at a place that is now my second home. Wally Lamb, I don't know if that sounds familiar to you, but he's a Connecticut author and has written many bestsellers one of which is called, I Know This Much To Be True. And I would like to borrow that title because after my tenure, I'd like to share five things that I know to be true. Number one, stay humble. I was retired two years when our women's lacrosse team was hosting one of the very first rounds at the N of the NCAA tournament. So I'm going to campus, of course. My name's on the comp list. Park my car, get to the ticket booth. There's a student there. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. I've been out two years. And my name's not on the list. And I'm like, uh, showing him my ID. Sorry, not working. I begged to get into this game for free. And finally, honestly, sheepishly, I said to him, we were 20 yards from the field. I said, see that field? That's the Robin L. Shepard field. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Robin L. Shepard. And he looked at me, he looked at the field, he looked back and he said, that'll be $5, man. <laughs> and I, <laughs> so stay humble. Your team colors. Your team colors will haunt you for a lifetime. So I wore blue and gold all through my four years in college. I then wore blue and gold for 41 years at Trinity College. I retired after three years. I finally bought something purple. And I was so uncomfortable. And, and tonight, like I was okay with a black dress, but when I put these red shoes on, I think I'm breaking down hives, because it's a, it's a black and red rivalry. I don't like it. Number three, the stall. The stall. I lost against the stall, and I won against the stall, using the stall. Both of them sucked. <laughs> and I... It was not a good feeling, either way. And so I applaud whoever in this room was responsible for the shot clock. Kudos to you. Number four is change. 
Although the rules, as, as Jane mentioned, uh, the, the rules of the game certainly have changed since we've coached, you as coaches at the very core have not. You continue to be selfless, enthusiastic, respectful, knowledgeable, and of course competitive. Being able to adapt to all the disruptors that are thrown at you, just a few I imagine are recruiting, admissions, student athlete welfare, parents, the all very popular communicating with your team and making everybody <laughs> feel valued. Um, it's a testament to your commitment um, as a college coach. I thank you all for adjusting to this ever-changing world of coaching. And lastly, memory and regret. Once you stop coaching, a lot of people ask you, what's your favorite memory? What's your fondest memory? And I, I honestly, I, I don't have one. I have a flood of memories. And some of them are bad, but they're all special. <laughs> they're all special. And my only regret, which I think I saw somewhere written, is that the NCAA didn't start offering championships for women until 1982. And then our NESCAC conference presidents, for a variety of reasons, decided that our NESCAC conference shouldn't be allowed to participate. It had something to do with academics. Meanwhile, Harvard was winning the championship, so I couldn't quite rationalize it. But if I have a small, small regret, it's that some of my early, really talented teams just never got to experience you know, that, that level of competition, were they to have been uh, chosen. Um, but again, I say that regret, we were playing the game we loved, we were thrilled to be doing it, and we had a blast the whole time. So my sincere thanks goes to the IWL, IWLCA Hall of Fame Committee, um, Chris Saylor, Kathy Taylor, the committees, for selecting me for this very elite group. Uh, thanks also to Danny, because she's kind of kept me on the straight and narrow for the last couple months with, with emails. To my NESCAC colleagues and my ever faithful Trinity Bantams, both current and past, Without you, I'm just a raspy voice on the sideline. Any relevance I have been given is a testament to all of you. A special thank you to those of you sharing my table tonight, all stars in their own right, Michelle Smith, Renee Olson, Catherine DeLilio, Katie Ritter, Liz Grote, and Kate Livesey, who I understand is the division, regional and division three coach of the year. Thank you. And lastly, thanks to our Trinity staff, Coach Katie Dissinger and her assistants, Libby Morrison and Avery Giorgio, for including me in pretty much everything you do. Katie, special thanks to you for always thinking about me. She has held at least four retirement parties for me. <laughs> and they've all been a blast. She invites me to all her alumni events. Uh, she invited me into the locker room for a pregame speech. Um, she, I believe she nominated me for this award tonight. Katie, I appreciate you more than I can express, and I'm so proud that you are our coach. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good luck next spring. Thanks. You know what I'm thinking right now? I am thinking we are so lucky to be sitting in this room hearing these stories. And, and I feel bad for the people that, that didn't get a ticket tonight and are missing out because these are some special times. I just want to say, Robin, after you left Trinity, some of the people that followed you did get those championships. <laughs> I felt the pain. 
<laughs> so they, they gave you a legacy you can be proud of. Uh, our last uh, honoree this evening is uh, a very special person to all of us, and her name has been on the lips of everyone who has come up there this evening. Uh, and so we are going to take a look at a, a special video of Diane Jeppy Aikens, and tonight, following the video, we have several of her daughters in the room, and her one daughter will come up, uh, Shannon Aikens Quinn, to accept it. But let's enjoy the video first. You know, I think at the end of the day, I do what I do every single day because of Diane. Um, she's inspired me to coach, to teach, to mentor, because she was such a tremendous one to me. She touched the sport of lacrosse, um, not just on the field and not just with the X's and O's, um, but, you know, she, um, she really led a life with perseverance and she just taught so many life lessons that um, I think will carry not only with her players, um, but the people that she uh, that she got to work with and that she got to coach against every day. I mean, to me, coaching is so much more than, than what goes on on the field. And Hall of Fame coaches, I think, have that extra something that they gave to their players, that they sacrificed of themselves. Uh, to me, it's so much more than the wins and the losses that she had. Um, I mean, those were many and well-deserved, but it's what she gave to us and what she built here that that makes all the difference. The effort, the heart, the hustle, the passion behind everything we did, she exuded that. She was an example of that every single day. So we didn't have a choice uh, but to sort of rise to her level daily. Diane wasn't just about X's and O's. She was about having the team as a family and having the girls work with each other, for each other, even if it meant we were working against her for something. <laughs> Um, so she knew, she just knew people and she knew how to make people work to their best abilities for not only her but each other and themselves. You know, to be honored amongst her peers, uh, many of whom are still coaching today, I think would truly be a, a great moment for her. An amazing way to celebrate um, an amazing career and life of a very special person. As a mentor off the field, um, Diane was truly an inspiration to everyone that she met and touched in their lives and I think um, she did it in, in a flair, in a way that she will never be forgotten. Her legacy is one that we continue to share with our athletes year after year and um, I think it's great that now um, she'll be, uh, her history will be shared with the IWS and the greater lacrosse community as well. So Shannon, we look forward to hear what you have to say, and it's awesome to have your sisters here too. Can you guys just stand up for a second and give everybody a wave? Hello and good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon Quinn, and I am standing here tonight to accept this honor in place of my late mother, Diane Jeppy Akins. I'm the youngest of Diane's children, some might say the favorite, and I, I am joined tonight by my sisters Jessica and Melissa. Our brother Michael could not be here with us tonight. I would first like to say congratulations to the other inductees, Jane Miller and Robin Shepard. I would also like to say a heartfelt thank you to Chris Saylor and the IWLCA for the honor of inducting our mother into the Coaches Hall of Fame. If you knew Diane as a coach, you know she is absolutely deserving of this high honor. If you knew her as a person, you know she didn't do anything for the recognition. That was Diane, invested, committed, successful in everything she did, awarded countless honors, and yet always passionate and always humble. If my mom were here tonight, she would likely give credit to a long list of individuals who contributed to her success. She would first thank her parents and family, 
my grandparents, still known today as Mops and Pops around campus, were truly Diane's number one fans. My grandfather never missed a game over my mom's extensive history with athletics. They served as her pillars of support, and it is no wonder my mom de demonstrated such commitment with models such as theirs. Next, she would thank every student athlete who came through the Loyola program and their families, some of which came tonight. Every graduating class held a special place in my mom's heart and furthered the culture of family that still exists within the Greyhound community today. She would thank Little Loyola College, now a prominent university and lacrosse powerhouse which she helped put on the map, every assistant coach that stood by her side, every administrator who supported her, and every person who made things happen behind the scenes. Also, she would thank Ann McCluskey, the coach and athletic director who put all of this in motion by taking a chance on a young, eager athlete ready to share her knowledge and love of the game with others. Diane was always unique. She had a spirit of enthusiasm, zest for life, and sense of humor that was contagious. She was upbeat and energetic, a little wild, <laughs> but tough and the calm you needed when necessary. She always knew just what to say to encourage greatness, gratitude, hope, and respect. She was a leader. She was a mentor. She was an inspiration. Diane truly lived by example, and no show of strength and resilience was greater than her last six months with us. My mom was first diagnosed with a brain tumor before I was one. While Di battled cancer, she raised a family, underwent surgeries and treatments, and still showed up every day to coach, which, let's admit, is both physically and mentally draining on its own. Yet there she was, with a smile on her face and passion in her eyes for nine more years. In 2002, the tumor returned. This time it was inoperable and terminal. Devastating news to everyone but Diane. Or if it was, you never would have known. The coaching didn't stop. She just did it from a wheelchair. The cursing, mostly at refs, definitely didn't stop. They were just too respectful and too scared to throw her out of the game. The positivity, the love, the selflessness, the appreciation for life, nothing had changed but her physical appearance. Despite everything that last season, she coached her girls to a number one ranking, almost flawless winning record, and a bid to the NCAA semifinal game in Syracuse. It is a game I will never forget. Those Loyola players truly gave everything for their fearless leader. I can still feel the motivation, the fight, the emotion of that game. A team giving every ounce of themselves to extend their, beloved's, their beloved coach's career, her passion, just one more day. That was the last game she ever coached. Loyola lost five to three. No thanks to my mom's great friend, Chris Saylor and her Princeton Tigers. <laughs> but as you can tell, I've totally moved past it even though I cried every time I stepped foot in the dome in college. <laughs> my mom said it herself, although she did not like to lose, clearly, she was happy it was to her good friend in a hard fought battle. A national championship eluded my mom, but what she was able to accomplish over 15 years as a head coach was nothing short of impressive. She obtained a career record of 197 wins to 71 losses. She led the Greyhounds to 10 NCAA tournament appearances, seven of which led to the Final Four. She acquired three national and four regional Coach of the Year honors, an NCAA Inspiration Award, a Torriton Lifetime Recognition Award, and an Award of Valor. This is also Diane's fifth Hall of Fame induction. Even today, 16 years after her passing, and after we thought she already won all the awards possible, she is being honored yet again for her incredible contributions to the game of lacrosse and to many of our lives. I am still surprised how synonymous her name is with Loyola Women's Lacrosse and how much her legacy lives on. My siblings and I have been asked for hugs by countless strangers who felt connected to her story. We have heard, oh my gosh, that was your mom, in the most unexpected of places. A Ravens game, an Orioles game, in a doctor's office, in an airport in Ohio, and many others. My brother was in a hotel in Pennsylvania a few years ago. He saw a boy with a Loyola t-shirt and began speaking with him. It turned out the boy's father had a framed newspaper article about my mom in the locker room where he coached. Throughout our lives, even after all this time, these interactions seem routine, yet there is always an element of surprise. 
Many of these strangers tell us about our own mother before they know she was our mother. Did you ever hear about that inspirational coach who passed a few years back? Those words or some variation have been spoken to all of us over the years. I still find it amazing and also humbling how the Loyola logo gets the conversation going and somehow concludes talking about the life and legacy of Diane Jeppy Akins. The legacy my mom has left reaches so much farther than the constraints of the lacrosse field and what she achieved on it. She lives on in the minds of her former players and colleagues. She lives on in former Greyhounds who have and still pace their own sidelines, fostering passion in a new generation of players. She lives on it as, as an integral part of Loyola Women's Lacrosse program, even as Jen Adams has achieved her own success. In addition, she lives on in her children. My siblings and I use her example in everything we do, how we interact with those around us, how we handle adversity, and how we strive to make the lives of others better by the career paths we have chosen. My sister Jessica is a middle school teacher and a truly incredible mother of three. My sister Melissa works as a radiation therapist, helping individuals through their toughest days, all while remembering that our mom and aunt died of the very disease she hopes to help another beat. I'm a speech language pathologist working in special education and support my own love of this game by coaching high school and club lacrosse. My brother Michael, well, he's a regional manager for a company and we aren't sure exactly what he does, <laughs> although I do know he is a great dad to his two children. We have not only been shaped by this inspirational woman we simply called mom, our lives have been impacted by the greater lacrosse community and all those who found her just as exceptional as we did. Thank you again to the IWLCA for bestowing this honor on a very deserving woman and coach. Thank you for recognizing her achievements and contributions to the game of lacrosse. And thank you for allowing me to accept it on her behalf. Once more, I wish to say congratulations to the other inductees and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. So again, I say a special evening. Um, as we wrap up this evening, I'm going to invite Chris Saylor, the chair of the Hall of Fame committee, to come up and, and give some closing remarks. Uh, before she does take uh, the stage, we want to thank everybody for attending and uh, invite everybody to attend our coaches social um, on the lower concourse if you'd like to continue this party. Chris? The podium is yours. Enjoy the evening. Well, what a night. Um, I think all of us here uh, were just blown away by all the speeches. Um, Shannon, you were phenomenal. Thank you for sharing your mom's story with all of us. I know how incredibly proud she is of you and your sisters and your brother. Um, and I know she's looking down right now and saying that you did a, just a fantastic job. Um, and to Jane, congrats. And to Robin and to everyone who's been honored, Ricky uh, and Patty and all the OVEC people. I mean, the, the speeches were so touching and funny. It was a great night. Thanks to everyone who came tonight. I also wanted to thank if, uh, my, all, my Hall of Fame committee. If the committee who's here could stand for some recognition, that would be great. <laughs> Denise, Karen. We have seven people on the committee and it's a very difficult job year in and year out uh, because there's so many qualified candidates, but I'm sure you guys all agree. We kind of hit it out of the park tonight. So glad you could all come. Hope to see you all at the social and good night, everybody. <laughs>